because of technology, because of medicine, we are living longer. And so there are five generations in the workplace today, first time that that's ever happened. But since we're living longer, we're working longer, it's very feasible in the very near future that we could be working with six, seven, eight, God forbid, nine different generations in the workplace. So the tension that you and I experience working across generations, communicating across generations, leading across generations, is only going to intensify moving forward. I think it's really important that we find our footing in today's multi-generational workplace. Here's why today is different, for two reasons. Technology and the internet. Those two items have been the greatest equalizer. You have those two powerful items that are changing the game everywhere, and you couple those with the largest generation on the planet, and that's the recipe for massive disruption. My message is not to let's change for the millennials. That's not my message. Do not hear me say that. It's not to change for the millennials. My message today is to use millennials as an example, as the behavior that we can look at to understand what business needs to look like in the future. So my goal here is to share all these things, dig in deep with the millennials so you can run your, your organizations, lead and communicate like it's the 21st century. Three out of every four workers globally will be millennials. 71% of millennials are disengaged at work. That makes them the most disengaged generation in the workplace. 58% of millennials expect to leave their jobs in three years or less. And there's now some recent research coming out saying it's even as low as 16 months. If you're trying to hire this generation, not only are you competing with your competitors to pluck this talent and pull it into your organization, but you're actually competing with millennials' own desire and ability and resources to be an entrepreneur. Millennials approach differently how they learn, work, socialize, communicate, and play due to technology. It's fundamentally shaped how they approach the world. Oftentimes, I don't think it's a lack of work ethic or it's that they're lazy. I think it's because they're underutilized. So as leaders, here's the bottom line. We need to provide clear, results-driven direction to engage millennials. Millennials will choose a city before they choose a job. And to them, what that reflects and what that says to all of us is that they value experiences and relationships over work. Over half of millennials are on Snapchat, and the largest growing demographic on Snapchat is teenagers. Millennials and Generation Z are communicating via Snapchat on a daily basis. Do you think when they come into the workplace that they're going to be satisfied with email? 30% of 21 to 32 year olds have already achieved a management position. Millennials high tech and hyper social upbringing have made them disruption prone leaders. This device is 100,000, 100,000 times smaller and several billion with a B, several billion times more powerful than a computer was in the early 1970s. And if you gave this device, this smart device to a child in a developing country, who had never had access to a mobile device, as soon as they put their hands on that mobile device, they would instantly have access to more information than the President of the United States did just 15 years ago. You see, we're adapting a lot faster than we think. So yes, Millennials, yes, Generation Z are all demanding change, but bigger picture is that the exponential times that you and I live in are forcing us to change. If we ignore it, we rest on what's always been and the status quo, we will be passed at the speed of Uber. Things are changing at a rapid rate right now. We gotta find our footing. How will millennials change your world? How will they change your organization? How will they change your industry? And are you ready? Well, don't panic. My name is Ryan, I'm your friend. We're gonna figure this out together.